Last month at CES, we saw the introduction of the most obvious device that no one saw coming, an AI companion that uses an innovative agent to simplify the use of AI applications and enhance the interaction with the real world, promising a more unencumbered experience than just using a mobile phone for the same purposes. The Rabbit R1 looks to be the next evolution in personal computing. What no one seems to be talking about is how this could impact hardware companies and their semiconductor industry in general. Once the inevitable wave of AI companions from other companies starts popping up everywhere, Intel and Nvidia in particular could have a new gold mine unfolding before their eyes with these devices, and possibly AMD also. Today's video is sponsored by urcdkeys.com. If you want to activate your Windows, you can pay Microsoft $100 or more for a Windows 10 Pro key, or you can get one from an OEM seller like URCD Keys, who have partnered with Cortex for a discount on what is already a really low price, for a total of just $15 when you use my code. The keys work globally, and you can even use them to upgrade to Windows 11. After you've made your purchase, you will find your key in your purchase orders on the URCD Keys website. Click on Get Keys and copy the key. Then in Windows, click on Start and type Activate, and then click Activation Settings. Then click Change Product Key, paste your key you just purchased, and click Next. That's it, Windows is activated. If you want Office 2021 Professional, you can use the same C25 code and get it for just under $84. URCD Keys has a New Year Super Sale going on right now, so you can get even more savings until the 31st of January. A huge thanks to URCD Keys for sponsoring today's video. Check the links in the description to get your cheap OEM Windows key today. If you remember the modern classic Her with Joaquin Phoenix and Scarlett Johansson, the Rabbit R1 might seem like an inevitability. In the movie, the main character Theodore, played by Phoenix, carries a device in his shirt pocket with a camera to capture the world around him and an in-ear monitor with which he communicates with the AI operating system hosted in the pocketed device, called Samantha, voiced by Johansson. The device looks somewhat like a Surface Duo or a Pixel Fold. The thing is, this movie came out 10 years ago, almost to the day. To put things into context, in 2014, the most popular phone was the iPhone 6, with Zenet calling it expensive at $650. Other popular phones that year were the BlackBerry Passport and the Nokia Lumia 1520. It's incredible to rewatch her 10 years later and realize just how spot on Spike Jones's movie was in representing what was at the time a plausible but distant and technologically utopic future. Jump to 2024 and people are out there walking their robot dogs while wearing goofy-looking diving goggles and gesturing like a sign language interpreter on Boomer TV newscasts. The Rabbit R1 is made possible by the recent advancements in AI, the large language models that have emerged, the emergence of AI agents, and of course over a decade of collecting data on almost every single thing on planet Earth and its every inhabitant. At this point, I presume everyone in my audience is is familiar with the Rabbit R1, but as a quick summary, this device comprises of a software component and a hardware component that synergize to create a new computing paradigm, once so intuitive that even your great-grandmother could use. By using what Rabbit calls language action models, a new foundation model that understands human intentions on computers, you can teach Rabbit how to do certain things online, like how to book a place on Airbnb. After watching you go through a workflow once, the Rabbit can repeat what you did, but with any new inputs you give it. This also works on desktop apps. If we go back to the movie Her, the main character's job was dictating letters to send to people's loved ones. All he did was issue voice commands, never needing to interact in any other way with his computer. With Rabbit, you can achieve the same level of interaction by training the model to follow a workflow, after which all you have to do is give it voice commands to repeat a similar task. Rabbit themselves have already trained the most popular apps and will continue that process, with the ultimate outcome being a whole operating system that replaces all your apps on your device. Rabbit claims that the R1 push speed is currently 500 milliseconds per response, but in practical terms, as we'll see, I think there are some caveats there. As far as observing the real world, when you double-click the R1's action button, the device goes into vision mode, with its rotating camera swiveling
scrolling to face forwards. You can then issue voice commands that relate to the world around you and are contextualized by the device's camera. Your commands are saved as a sound file, which needs to be converted into strings and then analyzed using the internal speech-to-text engine, and the text generated will then be sent out to whatever service is required online. When it comes to using the camera, of course, there's a larger latency there, as there's way more data to be processed. One of the most interesting uses for the R1 that was showcased in the reveal was how you can point the camera to your fridge and ask the agent to suggest to you a recipe using the ingredients that you have stored in there, qualifying it as a low-calorie meal, for instance. In the demo, assuming it was real-time, from the end of the voice command to the suggested recipe, I counted 11 seconds, with the company's CEO holding the device, pointing it at the extremely well-lit fridge the whole time. I mean, there's enough value there that this could be useful even as is, but when all of these seconds of waiting accumulate, I think it will be difficult to sell this experience beyond the novelty factor. Could better hardware solve this problem? Recently, Rabbit announced that they will also be including a full year of perplexity AI with every device for the first 100,000 R1 orders. If you don't know what perplexity is, it's kind of like Google on steroids. Not only does it search the internet in a much more efficient way, it also understands the nuances of what you are searching for. And beyond just aggregating sources for answers, it provides an easy-to-follow trail that guides you to what you are looking for. Without all the failed results you would get by searching Google, that just end up wasting a lot of your time. Perplexity will provide real-time precise answers for Rabbit R1 using their LAM API, which is always plugged into their online services. I think that's a very relevant upgrade to the already enticing device, but it doesn't solve the basic problem though. Once things go up into the internet, it's a matter of how fast a particular service can respond. But what about doing inference locally? As with the fridge example, it seems that many of the interactions could be a lot more instant if they were fully or partially completed locally. And for that to happen, better hardware will be needed. Microsoft's CEO said in a recent interview that the Rabbit R1 presentation was comparable to Steve Jobs' launch presentation of the original iPhone. A glowing compliment for sure. And he seemed to be hinting at Microsoft having a go at a similar mobile device. Seeing as Microsoft missed the mobile phone train back in the original iPhone days by dismissing the technology because of its early encumbrances and limitations, it seems only natural to see Microsoft keen on getting early into what could be the next big thing in personal computing. One of the potential real breakthroughs of Rabbit's R1 is how it unifies all the applications that one uses separately into a single voice command. So if you want to schedule a ride and get some food delivered to your destination when you arrive there, instead of using two different apps to achieve this, you can do it with just one command, using natural language. If the results are not to your satisfaction, you can always train the R1 to perform the task exactly as you intended. I mean, we all end up repeating more or less the same routines every day, so once trained, I could see an AI companion saving a lot of time, if it can be snappy at executing the routines, that is. Even if the hardware is not exactly stellar, it's easy to see the potential that the Rabbit R1 has. As with all current things AI, it's always about the potential, rarely about actual current executions. And this is where companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and especially Nvidia and Intel can have an exciting new business opportunity. AI on the edge is all about speedy inference and great software and hardware co-design. Intel's experience and disaggregated strategy fits this perfectly. They can very quickly put together a chip that focuses on inference, with several tiles for NPU computation, possibly at the expense of other types of computation to keep costs down. And their extensive experience working with OEMs in mobile devices gives them a huge advantage in this new AI companion segment. To get true real-time functionality, you need the device to respond immediately, not after 500 milliseconds, or even after several seconds of your prompt. This can be achieved by partially resolving the query locally on the device itself, so that what gets fetched from online servers is minimal, with the most of the logic of the operation done on the device's hardware locally. Things like image recognition, translation, transformers, speech recognition, and speech to text need to happen instantly, and all the inference done with that also needs to happen instantly, as the time budget of AI interactions should be reserved for fetching actual data online, submitting forms, etc. If Intel seems perfectly positioned to provide such a 
inference focused chip right now with a quick time to market. Given the work they have already laid out for Lunar Lake, on the server side, Nvidia will also massively benefit. Everything that cannot be done locally will be delegated to a server, and the response time needs to be speedy if AI companions are to succeed. And Nvidia are the current supreme leaders in this area. Another company really well positioned for this possible wave of devices is Tenstorrent, who are already offering efficient edge solutions. More on that in a future video. Speaking of efficiency, I feel like this is where AMD might be caught with their pants down. While AMD has the tech, in fact they've already included NPUs in their Zen products, in the ultra-efficient sub-10 watt segment, they don't seem to have anything that can compete with the ARM-based chips or with Intel's upcoming Lunar Lake, at least nothing that's been announced yet. And I don't think they have the scale that Nvidia has to be able to cater to the demand that such a wave of new products could create server-side. The Rabbit R1 is powered by a MediaTek MT6765 octa-core from 2018. This ARM chip is built on 16 nanometer and features a low-end power VR GPU, so not exactly an SoC purpose-built for AI. Of course, hardware is only half of the story, and it's in software that I think both Nvidia and Microsoft can really dominate this new segment. Microsoft has already been investing heavily into AI for the next iteration of Windows, which will work on both X and ARM, and I don't need to tell you that NVIDIA is leading the front when it comes to AI-related software, with CUDA and their suite of AI applications. Perhaps a triumvirate of Intel making the SoC, NVIDIA providing the GPU and software, and Microsoft producing a Surface Companion device could be a good combination, although NVIDIA's experience with ARM could see them just go their own way. They have made hardware like the Shield devices, so they have some experience there. Perhaps a Shield Companion with an ARM-based SoC and all the NVIDIA software could be a hit. While there are several possible opportunities there for collaboration or for custom-built devices, I think this is a unique opportunity to truly standardize chiplets and fabrics and to create an open platform where all hardware manufacturers could add their own compatible chiplets. If Rabbit are smart and looking ahead, I think this is what they should be focusing on. Imagine a framework built by Rabbit that accepts chiplets from any manufacturer. OEMs could grab an inference-focused SoC chiplet from Intel, a GPU chiplet from Nvidia, a video processing and camera chiplet from Sony, and for an industrial device, perhaps an FPGA chiplet from AMD. All of these would be packaged into a powerful chip that could go into, say, the next Google Pixel phone, or a new Microsoft Surface Duo, or just any niche device, really. The device itself could be modular, with a main client that you carry in your pocket, in-ear monitors that you put into your ears, and a camera that you wear in your Ray-Bans. You know, kind of like in the movie Her. Huh? If you haven't watched the movie, I won't spoil it for you, but let's just hope AI agents don't go the same way as Samantha. One thing's for sure, even if the Rabbit R1 turns out to be a fail, no one will want to miss the next iPhone moment. So you can expect to see a slew of devices similar to the R1 in concept coming out in the next few months from several companies. I can see a lot of companies taking the plunge just in case this does end up becoming a growth segment. I I mean, VR isn't exactly mega mainstream popular, and look at how much investment has gone into that. I think the greatest barrier to getting to a device like the AI OS in the movie Her and a personal assistant like Samantha are the dictation engines, because right now it's just much easier and quicker to type things in than it is to speak into a device, especially a device that doesn't understand you unless you speak slowly and clearly, which is not exactly natural. If Rabbit's model and device can address that, and others improve on it, to the point where there's no noticeable latency between speaking and getting a response to our commands, then these devices will surely take off, and the sky's the limit. As for the R1 itself, I do worry that there's a usability issue with having to hold the device and then hold an analog button to get it going. I think the ultimate experience would be completely hands-free. Another problem that's specific to the Rabbit is that the hardware is just not up to snuff when it comes to consuming content. The screen is clearly not good enough to watch videos on, audio won't be on the level of a dedicated DAC, and the camera is not good enough to take good quality photos and share memories with friends and family on social media. So the R1 feels like a precursor to something bigger and better, like MySpace came first but Facebook improved on it, or Flickr before Instagram, or Yahoo before Google, or Nokia before Apple, or all the other tech YouTube channels out there that came before Cortex. I mean, I do think 
think Rabbit's strategy is the right way to enter a new market with a cheap device that can showcase the potential of the general philosophy the company is trying to realize, but it will be the next wave of devices that will really be worth taking a serious look at. Subscribe to the channel while you're here, share this video around, and a big thank you especially to the absolute legends that are my patrons, to whom I'll be talking to on the Cortex Discord server. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.